Hey everybody, I'm Patrick Norton for Signal by Sony, and I'm here today to help you get the most out of your audio gear. Music or movies, simple sound bar, or high dollar surround sound system, there are a few simple tricks you can do to a room to really bring out the best entertainment experience from the gear that you have without spending a bunch of money. Let's get started. First up, you gotta figure out where to sit. It might sound silly, but where you sit in your room matters. Surround sound is all about math, so placing your couch directly centered in front of the TV, it's important, but it's just the beginning. Now, first up, don't sit too far away from the screen. If you've got a 40 inch TV, four to six feet away is about right. A 50 inch TV, five to seven feet. A 60 inch TV, six to nine feet away. Or just take the screen size of the TV measured diagonally and multiply that by two. Does that sound too close? It isn't. This is not your old school TV from back in the day. 1080p resolutions means closer viewing distances so you can immerse yourself in the video and enjoy the extra detail of high def. And if you're a 4K TV owner, you can run even bigger screen sizes for a given distance. So, the couch is centered on the TV, you got it the right distance, now it's time to make sure your speakers are located properly. If you have a sound bar, make sure it's dead center under the TV. For separate speakers, the center channel goes under the TV, and the left and right channel should be turned towards the sweet spot, that seat directly in front of the screen, usually at a 22 or 30 degree angle. Now, ideally the tweeters on the speakers will be level with your ears, and make sure there's nothing between the speakers or sound bar and your ears. A stack of magazines, a puppet, whatever, you'll block the audio goodness, especially especially the high end and you don't want that. And hey, make sure your main seating location is at least one foot away from the back wall if possible. Getting the couch away from the rear wall gives you space to locate the left and right back speakers in a 7.1 system and it'll help keep bass from sounding boomy and distorted because it's getting bounced off the wall and up to your face. Now, it's time to evaluate your room. First, go stand in the middle of the room and clap your hands. Did you hear an echo? What they call a slap back or a crazy sort of reflective noise? If you did, chances are you've got a lot of bare sheetrock walls or a bunch of glass windows. Look, in any room, sound is all about what we call reflections. It bounces and reflects around the room off all the hard surfaces, walls, floors, ceilings, everything in your room impacts how the sound travels and it can really mess up your audio experience. Too much echo, it's bad. So the most common thing to help combat unwanted reflection or to kill that echo is to play sound absorption material or hard staggered objects to deflect the sound in different directions. Now, you can spend a lot of money on room tuning kits and foam and special stuff like that, but if you got a lot of echo, keep it simple. You just need to add some sound absorbing material. Sound fancy? Nah, just get curtains for the windows or that big glass sliding door. Hang in art or other objects that'll disperse the audio around the room. Staggered books of different sizes or objects on a shelf, they can all prevent those really nasty echoes. And don't forget the floor. Experiment with an area rug, it can make a huge difference. Sound bars beat TV speakers. A full surround sound system can be pricey, and you've gotta run cables, hang speakers. If you're not up for that, but you want better audio than what comes from the TV speakers, a sound bar is the thing for you, especially if you have a smaller space. It's not only gonna enhance your movies and sports and TV shows, it'll give you the optioning of listening to music if you're entertaining. As I mentioned earlier, you wanna make sure you have a clear run from your ears to the sound bar. No stacks of magazines, no little tchotchkes, and if your sound bar is designed to mimic the rear channels of a surround sound speaker system, you might wanna use less sound absorbing material or dispersing treatment around the room so you get the full effect that you paid for. Check this out. See these specific sound waves that are happening all around the room? Those waves need to flow pretty freely in order to create that surround sound experience from a sound bar. So you're going to need some reflective materials in the room and just remember a completely reflective room is just as bad as a completely absorbative room. You need a balance to make the audio sound its best. Don't forget the subwoofer. Did a subwoofer come with your surround sound system or your sound bar? Excellent, it's gonna give low end audio, whether it's bass from a band or the thud of an explosion, the low end oomph, it sounds amazing. Now, placing a subwoofer in the corner, it usually increases the bass output, but more bass doesn't necessarily mean bass that actually sounds good to your ears. Here's a really cool installer trick. Try placing the subwoofer at or very near the main listening spot. Now play a music track with constant bass or a good steady beat. Now, once you got it going, move around the room until you figure out where the bass is the most deep, not too boomy, not too distorted, but sounds best. Once you've figured that location, that's where the subwoofer should be located. Hopefully not, say, in the middle of the coffee table. You might not be able to put it where the bass sounds perfect. Hopefully right now your speakers sound amazing. I hope these tips have been helpful. I'll see you next time. I'm Patrick Norton for Signal by Sony.